I'm Diane Riley McNabo. I um, come from Dubbo. I'm Raju and Gamilaroi. I'm Raju on my father's side, so Dubbo Wellington Riley's. Um, and I'm Gamilaroi on my mother's side, uh, Moree Tumala Bogabilla, um, and a lot of other little towns around there. So, two big um, Aboriginal nations from New South Wales. I'm an Aboriginal teacher, I'm one of the first Aboriginal teachers um, language and culture um, in New South Wales. I wasn't sure what it would be like, I knew there'd be a lot of different nationalities um, um, coming to share their culture and that uh, and to talk about concerns and stuff they have on uh, within their um, communities and uh, what problems they might be facing. Um, with, in regards to their land and their culture and their language and their, their heritage that they are we are all trying to fight to save and protect. The positive thing is that I, I've got to actually see different people, I, I've got to see the instruments that they use, their language, their songs, um, their uh, stories, um, the, sh the sharing. Uh, I've got to see some of, hear some of the concerns and that, but um, it was very hard for us not speaking a Italian or Spanish. They weren't doing enough uh, translation in English for us to really comprehend um, what the people from the other nations were um, trying to tell us, and it was really important to get the message to us, but because the English interpreter was just whispering to a few we couldn't hear everything that she was saying um, in regards to what the other people were, were saying to us. So I think if they'd had um, the Spanish, Italian and um, English translators on the microphone so we could hear all that important, um, the important messages that each nation was trying to, to give to one another so that it can connect us up there to make us stronger um, and unite us in our uh, causes to protect our language and culture. To me as an Aboriginal person, your language, your culture, your identity and your sense of belonging to your, your country, um, um, your nation, uh, that sense of belonging to that area of land that you come from is really important. The stories, the language, the songs, being able to pass on from one generation to another generation to another generation is so important and I think that is one of the good things that we have seen as, as elders coming along um, on this trip. We've been able to pass that knowledge down to the young ones that came with us and share some of the dances and, and stories and songs with them. They have improved heaps. Each time they get up to perform they're getting better and better. Um, and working out, uh, actually listening to the the didgeridoo and the clap sticks and following them better, um, and listening to the stories behind the dances and the songs. I think that's been invaluable. We feel like we're going through paparazzi, so every time we're just walking to to do our dances and songs and that, um, people are following us. Excuse, excuse, they one momento. Um, can we get your photo? So. We've got every two steps we're taking, um, we've had to get pictures taken. We haven't had to, but we've stopped and allowed people to take our pictures. Um, this is the first time that Aboriginal women have, came, have come to this festival. Um, and it's the first time that we've bought the new headdresses and belts and the kangaroo skin cloaks. So when we've got them on, they really want to get their picture taken with us. We've also uh, put some of the cloaks on people and allowed them to get their picture with the cloaks as well. But we've ha found we've had to make sure we leave 15 to 20 minutes early just so we can get to the spot we've been allocated to to do our dance and our song. So that's been um, timing, trying to work that timing out in itself as well. If people have the opportunity to come over here and, and um, actually take part in the festival that is a really good thing I think they will gain a lot out of it there, there could have been a little bit more with organising um, and telling people exactly what they're doing when they go to sites there's a lot of um, working out your, for yourself 
Um, lucky that um, myself and Lewis and Uncle Ralph, Aunty Narelle, have worked in schools before. So we pick up things pretty quickly. But for someone who hasn't, um, it could be seen as a bit confusing and stuff like that. We weren't sure with the schools until we actually got there what we were doing. Um, so we had to organise on the run. Um, but other than that, it's been pretty good. Uh, we've been well looked after um, with the accommodation, our flights over here, our meals. Some of the meals took a little bit of getting used to um, because they're not um, like what we have in Australia. But I, as I told the children, not every country eats the same food and you have to respect that, that um, to them it may be really um, fantastic food and we should value that and honour that they have gone to the trouble to make the food and that for us. Um, so it took us a while to find out shops and supermarkets and that, we're just finding them out now and we're just about to go in three or four days. Um, so I think if we have it in Australia, it's, it's good to ha have a mud map of where the shopping centres and things are so people can go and get um, uh, food and that, that they might like to cook that they like. Um, and and um, cause not everybody eats the same food. So that's, that's probably a thing that I would take into consideration. I am really looking forward. I think I was looking forward to it a week ago. I think three weeks is, is a very long time for, for me personally to be off country. Um, so I'm looking very forward to uh, being back home with my family and back on country and stand on my own ground. Yes.